All right. Hello and welcome, everybody, to this Open Source Summit EU virtual session. Thank you very much for joining us today, uh, especially at a Friday afternoon. Uh, my name is Lasto Bensonoy. I'm a software engineer at Cisco. Uh, and I'm here with my colleague, uh, Joelt, uh, who will be our co-presenter co today. Would you mind introducing yourself? Yes. Uh, hello, guys. I'm just waiting for the camera to pick up the speed. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Joel Varga, and I'm also a software engineer at Cisco, and I'm really happy uh, last of with the presentation. All right, so how we are going to do this mostly is that basically I'm going to do the blah, blah, blah talking parts, and uh, Wayne will show us the actual and meaningful demo contents. Uh, so today we would like to introduce to you uh, to an open source uh, tool called Cluster Registry. Uh, so cluster registry, would you move to the next slide, please? Thanks. So cluster registry is a tool that we designed and implemented at Cisco internally. Uh, and we fairly recently open sourced it. You can find the source code at GitHub. Uh, and there you will see that this is a Kubernetes operator. The business logic is written in a Kubernetes operator and it is, uh, it is written in Golang. So we prepared this uh, build this tool originally for our, for a very specific use case of ours. Uh, but from day one, we had in mind to create a fully generic tool to support numerous multi-cluster use cases. At least this is what we hope. And uh, that is why we are giving these presentations and uh, doing similar things uh, to uh, show around this open source tool to the community. And uh, we are very much looking for uh, feedbacks uh, to, to understand uh, what kind of use cases you might have. So as you are listening to this presentation today and uh, it, it rings a bell to you that it might be useful for this or that kind of use case uh, or, or you have ideas how we could improve this, please, uh, and, and any feedback are more than welcome. So cluster registry. Uh, if I would have to summarize uh, the, most, the two most uh, important things that it does, is that first of all, it uh, helps to form a group of Kubernetes clusters um, to be able to uh, do some kind of operations uh, besides those clusters. Uh, that's the first thing. And probably more inter interestingly, it also helps to actually synchronize any kind of Kubernetes resources uh, across these Kubernetes clusters. So you will be able to uh, synchronize not only like pods or deployments, but any kind of other Kubernetes resources as well, uh, on demand, uh, configurable with a declarative API using this, this cluster registry tool. These are the two most uh, valuable things of this uh, tool. And um, we, will show, we will show in detail what we mean by this. Uh, so now I, I will just mention that it, it's also fully distributed. So it has no central component. Uh, it has no single point of failure. Um, so if, if it makes sense uh, for your use case, then, then it might be useful. And also it uses a gossip-like protocol, uh, meaning that it's not like if, if some tenant has some kind of information, it's not like it needs to be uh, talked to directly to all other participants in the cluster group. Uh, it's, it's enough if it's shared funds and then it will be spread across uh, the, the participating clusters. Um, yeah, we can, we can move to the next slide, which is uh, showing us uh, mostly the architecture, let's say, uh, or how, how the cluster registry controller works in multiple clusters. So it is uh, in a multi-cluster case, it is the controller is installed in, in uh, each and every cluster. And uh, the important uh, thing to note here is that uh, from a security perspective, what we did is that the right operations only happen on local Kubernetes clusters uh, and the remote sides, the remote uh, operations are always uh, read operations only. Uh, so when, when a controller needs to do some kind of synchronization between these clusters, it, it only reads from the, from the remote clusters and uh, it, it will do the writes locally. Uh, let's talk about the uh, API. Um, so basically, we have <coughs> C3 uh, custom resource definitions, CRDs, defined for the cluster registry. And what we are planning to do is 
uh, go uh, step by step uh, for each of these three and basically uh, explain uh, these uh, level steps. Um, so the first one is the cluster CRD, uh, which is exactly as you might expect. It describes the Kubernetes cluster itself. Uh, it has a name, of course, and it has a cluster ID, which, which aims to be a unique identifier uh, of that cluster. And the implementation detail is that it's actually the, the UID of the cube system namespace. Uh, because that's, uh, not, uh, that namespace cannot be deleted, so it will be the same uh, as long as the cluster is uh, alive. And there are just uh, two other important uh, field sections uh, in this uh, in this CR. Uh, the, one, the first one is uh, secret reference or some kind of authentication information for that cluster, which basically in this case holds uh, a cube config. Uh, for this cluster for Redux tests. So basically, again, this CR is present in this cluster. And uh, this is the authentication information for this cluster itself. So when other clusters uh, see this, have this information, then based on this information, they can talk to uh, this cluster. And another thing uh, which is needed uh, is the Kubernetes API endpoints field where basically you can um, override the Kubernetes API server address and uh, define from which exact network uh, on which exact IP you can uh, reach that Kubernetes API server. And also if needed, you can provide a CA, CA bundle as well. Um, yeah, and this was the spec of the um, cluster CR and the status is uh, basically filled by the cluster registry controller. Uh, so basically it collects all kinds of information from the API server uh, from multiple places and it collects this to one single place where you, you will be able to see all this kind of distribution, Kubernetes version, locality regions, etc. All this kind of information at one place uh, about that single cluster. The only uh, other field that I would mention is the type field, which as you can see in this example, it's local. Uh, the other option, it can be Spear, and uh, Vane will show us uh, when that is the case. Okay, so let's uh, turn into demo mode. Uh, okay, so, so we prepared uh, three clusters uh, for this presentation. And uh, the basically, uh, we only just have a very small pre-configuration here. So the, so the first cluster, is uh, almost completely empty. The other ones uh, uh, just only contains the, the cluster registry controller uh, for, for speed up the process. But uh, for the first one, I can, I can show you, you know, how, how easy it is to install that. So, so basically we have a ham chart uh, for, the, for the cluster registry controller uh, that will uh, manage the, the, the cluster CRs and everything else that Lossi was talking about. So uh, what, what you basically see here is just a simple uh, ham install. Uh, the two variables that we set is one is the cluster name and the other one is the, the API server endpoint address that was also mentioned uh, earlier. So if you hit enter, it will just uh, relatively easily install the cluster registry controller. Uh, it's a pretty small uh, from resource and size perspective, so it should be up and running relatively quickly. And you will see that it, it will create uh, a cluster resource as well. And this is a, this is a convenience uh, of, the, of the controller. Uh, basically, uh, you don't have to create the local cluster resource, but based on the provided information, it will create it for you. Uh, so right now you can see uh, that it's already, uh, uh, it, it is already created. And, and if we, if, if we check the, the content, uh, basically we get uh, the spec part is, is, uh, is configured uh, with, the, with the endpoint, everything else, and also the status is also filled with, uh, with those useful information that you have here. Okay, so yeah, we have a cluster uh, uh, defined. This is a local cluster. And if we check the other uh, clusters right now, we can see that uh, they all have uh, the, the similar local cluster resource that will show uh, what, what you have locally. Now, okay, so 
that's pretty good, but not good enough. So the next step is to, to somehow connect those clusters together. Now, this is pretty easy uh, because uh, all you have to do basically is just to uh, copy the, the, the cluster and a secret uh, for that particular cluster. Now, uh, I, I just copy it and uh, I, I just mentioned it quickly. So when the, control, when the controller starts, it basically creates um, a local uh, a secret that contains uh, a cube config for that particular cluster. And it will only have just read, provide read access for that cluster. So basically with this, with this command, we just copy those resource, uh, resources and we can just paste it uh, on any other cluster. So we, if we paste it on the second cluster, what is it? It's this right here. Yeah, so if you paste it on the second cluster, then uh, what will happen if you check the clusters, then we have to, uh, we, we have the, the first cluster set here. If we uh, have some more information, then we can see that it's not synced yet because obviously the other side is just not configured I mean, the first one. So we have to basically repeat this step and copy that information from the second cluster and paste it on the first one. And if we, and if we are make it right, then it's now seeing. So basically those two clusters are uh, known, know about each other. Okay, so what about the third one? Now this, uh, basically the, 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 the step is kind of similar. So we copy the, the information from the first one and paste it on the third one. If when we paste it on the third one, now that, that is where the interesting problem or comes in. So basically, as you can see, we already have, have just the local cluster previously. Now we added the first one, but there is a second one as well. Why is that? It's because we have the synchronization subsystem we did the controller and uh, okay, we only just have connection for the first one. And it's, as you can see, it's not fully synced yet because we are not at the, the, the third here, but it will be still able to, to read basically the cluster information. So to, just to finish the synchronization, we just copy the, um, the third cluster's information and paste it on the first one just to finish the, uh, the cluster for group forming. And as you can see, if we check in any of those clusters, the, the representation of, of the whole cluster group should be exactly the same. Uh, so, so and, and, and as you probably uh, uh, get is that we don't have to add, uh, as last you mentioned, this like a gossip protocol. So you don't have to add, if you have, I don't know, 10 clusters, obviously you don't have to do this, uh, uh, this connection uh, manually for, for, you know, uh, a lot of times, but with the synchronization, it's, uh, it's just uh, pretty easy to, to form even larger groups. And uh, yeah, and so let's get back to Lassi to continue with the, with the presentation. Yes, yeah, so also the question is, how is that possible? Uh, because obviously, they just uh, copied uh, to one cluster, this cluster, CR and the secret, <clears throat> and it was already on the, second, uh, on the other one as well. Uh, and how is that possible? And also, it's great that we uh, connected these clusters to a group, uh, but uh, I mentioned that this tool is able to synchronize resources between these clusters. Uh, how, how does that work? And that's exactly where the resourcing rule CRD is coming into the picture. So basically, uh, with this CR, uh, this is the most important CR of this, of this cluster registry tool, uh, you can you can define on demand uh, what kind of resources you would like to sync, synchronize across these clusters and how exactly. So basically what you see here is that in this example, uh, we are syncing a secret type resource uh, and basically we can provide an exact match uh, for, a, for an exact object. Uh, right here we are uh, syncing this test secret from the uh, cluster registry namespace and we are also providing uh, different matchers, for example, for the annotations. Um, and uh, this, this API is uh, pretty, pretty broad, so you can define a lot of, lot of other uh, stuff, a lot of other matchers. 
so you can define uh, matchers for namespaces for any any particular key value pairs uh, that this uh, resource holds or uh, label matchers uh, with the does not exist or you know other similar uh, uh, label based operators um, all this kind of stuff you can define and also besides the matchers there is another uh, tool you can define which is the mutations so you can not only synchronize simply resources across these, these clusters, but you can actually apply mutations on those. So you can modify uh, the original resource and to, for example, in this example, add the label uh, to this uh, to this other resource. So uh, this is this is what it does, and uh, Liam will be kind enough to to show it for us. Okay, so get back to the demo mode again. So basically, uh, just to show you guys real quick, so, so uh, when a controller starts, it, it creates uh, these resourcing rules by, by default. So this is why uh, people are able to, to synchronize, or, or the tool will be able to synchronize the clusters because there are that specific uh, resourcing rule to move, all, move the, the secrets of the clusters and the sync rules themselves over. Okay, so let's give you that, that example that let, lots of people mention it. So, so we have a, a, a resource sync rule here, uh, and we get back to those later stage. So the resource sync rule is just, it's a bit different from what's on the slide, but basically uh, we're matching for, for uh, secrets in the default namespace that matches that annotation. And when it's synchronized over, the we would like to mutate it and so add this particular label to the synchronized resource. And see what happens if I apply that particular resource. Uh, as you can see, it's added to the, to the cluster. And if you check on the other clusters, there is this synchronization rule as well. So by default, those synchronization rules are themselves synchronized uh, in the whole group. So it's, if you check uh, in the default namespace, what kind of uh, secrets we have there, you see just the, uh, just the default uh, service account token secret there on the second cluster. This, this is kind of the same uh, on the third one, as I said, those are empty clusters basically. Okay, see, uh, let, let, let's see what happens uh, if I uh, at this secret on the first clusters, for example. If we can check there, the, the state is, oops, sorry. There is a bit more get than I need. Okay, so there is no uh, secret there. What if I add one? I add this, you check this, it's created, and I'll check the other signs. Second one, third one, boom. There are those secrets. And also the label that, that we added as a mutation, it's also there. So if I issue the exact same command, then you, you can see, if I can select this, you can see here uh, that that particular label is not set on the original resource, but is set as a mutation uh, on, on these resources as well. Okay, uh, what, what, what happens if I, uh, if I remove uh, a sync resource? Okay, so from the second cluster, I remove the test secret. Okay, it's there again. <laughs> so you cannot remove it. Why? Because the original is already exists. So uh, if I, also, but, but if I delete from the, from the original location, you know what happens? Then it vanishes. Okay, so it, it keeps, keeps the whole thing just, just fully synchronized eventually. Uh, okay, now basically, uh, as I mentioned, the, the resource sync rules are synchronized, uh, you know, in a, to every other cluster now, but there could be a case where you don't really want that. So you, do, you don't want to, to have the same synchronization effect maybe on every participant cluster. 
So what you can do there to, to solve this, I just remove this. Uh, and it's now removed from the other part, other side as well. Uh, so what you can do is that you can use a special annotation uh, to basically uh, modify uh, the, the, the resourcing, uh, the synchronization for the resource, and you can specify that that particular resource sync rule should not be uh, synced over. So let's just apply it on the on the second cluster. Let's say I just want to synchronize those particular circuits onto the second cluster only. Then uh, we can apply this resource here. We can check uh, it's there. If you check the other sides, it should not be there since we set that annotation. Now, again, with the same secret, uh, it's obviously it's not here. Let's see what happens if I apply it again so on, the, on the first cluster. If I apply it, then it should be synchronized over here and it's there. But it's not on the other cluster because the resource synchro is just basically just created here and it, it didn't get synchronized over. So this is just a very basic example about how you can synchronize over uh, resources, how you can control. This is basically a pool model. So the resource sync rule is kind of configures what to pull, uh, and uh, with that annotation you can you can uh, fine grain it a bit, you know, uh, based on where you put it. And uh, with that, I let's get back to last to continue with the presentation. All right. So basically, with the resource sync rule, you can synchronize resources across all your clusters, and with this annotation, you are able to define which clusters to synchronize your resources as well. And uh, maybe you are wondering, is there a feature where you can define which clusters from you would like to synchronize only? Uh, and yes, there is. And this is what brings us to our third uh, CRD of the cluster registry, which is called cluster feature. So basically, uh, how this works is that in the resource sync rule spec, there is a cluster feature match field uh, where you can provide a feature name. and um, Basically, what happens is that uh, on that cluster where the, this resource sync rule is defined, it will only pull from those clusters when there is a cluster feature CR defined with this exact feature name. So on, on, there is that other uh, CR uh, on, on this example, uh, the above. Uh, so the cluster feature CR with that test secret feature feature name set on those clusters where it is defined, uh, this uh, secret, these uh, resources will only be seen from uh, those clusters. Okay, let's just do a demo on it as well. So let's get back here. I just remove the secret again. And I also, it should be removed. And I also remove the resource include as well, just to re edit it uh, in a bit. So go back here, let's just comment this annotation out, but have discussed that feature. Mess. So what it changes basically, what I'm going to show you is that we reapply this resource sync rule. It will be synchronized to all the clusters, at least that's the intention because we don't have this special annotation, but uh, we added this cluster feature match here. So uh, what will happen is that when I apply it on the first cluster, it will be synchronized, that's fine. Let's see what happens if I create the secret again on the first cluster. I create the secret, see what we get here. Nothing basically. Why? Because we configure that we, although we have the resource sync rule on the third and the, uh, the second and the third cluster, uh, there is basically uh, where the cluster, where the secret is created on the first one, the, the, the cluster feature is not exist. So basically it's never matches, so it's never gets synchronized. So to fix that, we can apply the cluster feature uh, on the first cluster that, that, that says basically that it provides that feature. And if you check the secret again, now it gets synchronized. So we didn't have to, you know, we didn't change the resource includes there. So it's a pretty decoupled way 
So basically, uh, the resource thing is already there. Let's just say some some applications want some resources, then that application basically uh, uh, configures to a resource cycle and intent to synchronize something over without any knowledge about which other clusters can provide it uh, within the cluster loop. And basically that can change uh, you know, in, at any time. When somebody in, installs another application that is, you know, provides that particular resource that the intent is for on the other clusters, then it can install the cluster feature and then you're good to go. And uh, so basically, uh, this is it. One, one other thing I would like to mention here is that why we have this cluster feature. Because, you know, generally we could say that uh, we can select uh, clusters for, for this, you know, for the same behavior, select clusters by labels, for example. But why we choose not to do that is because of ownership. So if you want to uh, let, let's say you have a cluster resource, and if you uh, and we, if you would base this feature on to, on labels, then somebody has to take care of setting different kinds of labels on that particular cluster resource on on, on a cluster, you know, uh, based on several factors. And you have uh, you know ten cluster features provided by ten teams in your organization. Then who has the ownership for the cluster resource? It's a much more clear. Uh, you know, uh, connection uh, and architecture with the different cluster features CRD, because then those teams can define their own cluster features, you know, without stepping on each other's toes. So just just this small addition to that. And uh, and again, let's get back to Lutzi to continue with the presentation. All right. Thank you very much again for these nice demos and explanations. Sure. So last but not least, I would like to touch upon another uh, important topic uh, of cluster registry, just real quickly, which is which is the permission question. So basically, uh, by default, uh, those uh, remote cube configs have very limited access uh, to those other remote clusters. Uh, that's totally intentional, uh, just to be able to read uh, what, what we absolutely have to. But what happens if we want to synchronize some other the type of resources, let's say config maps, or it could be even custom resources, uh, which are by default not allowed uh, for the cluster registry controller to read from the uh, remote clusters or to write uh, on the on the local uh, cluster. So for that, we are actually utilizing a built-in Kubernetes feature called uh, cluster role aggregation, or something like this, probably. Uh, and with that, basically, uh, you don't need to modify the actual uh, original uh, resources, service accounts uh, with the, uh, or cluster roles rather, uh, with the airbox rules defined. Rather, you can define your own uh, cluster roles. Uh, for example, let's say you would like to uh, synchronize config maps. You can, uh, you can specify on those roles uh, with these labels and autom automatically these will be applied uh, to the original uh, cluster registry cluster roles, and this way, uh, very um, easily, you can you can um, define that you would like to uh, read or write certain resources. Um, yeah, and uh, with that, uh, I would I would just summarize that again, this cluster registry tool is able to uh, form a Kubernetes cluster group. Uh, which is which is already a great benefit. You can you have a consistent view of your clusters. Uh, you can see uh, the other clusters as well, and uh, with a very extensive API, as you saw, uh, you are able to synchronize any kind of Kubernetes resources in a declarative way uh, across those clusters, and uh, you can even uh, define how how exactly. And again, I would highlight again that how this system works, it is fully distributed. There is no central component. Out of those three clusters that were in the mode, none of them were special, none of them were central or anything like that. Uh, this, everything works in a fully distributed manner. Uh, if you are interested in more, check out the repo, the source code, uh, reach out to us. Uh, and again, we deliberately uh, prepared this demo in a way that we showed the CRs, the Lego steps that we have for this and not we were not uh, showing an exact use case because this way uh, I hope it resonates I hope it resonates with some of you. Uh, you you are seeing maybe some use cases that you might use this for uh, you have some ideas how we could improve this so again 
I would encourage everyone that uh, feedbacks are, are very welcome and uh, we, we appreciate it, that. So you, you can uh, find us uh, at these email addresses, uh, check out the source code, and thank you very much for listening today.